Well, now that we have the binary phase shift keying transmitter implemented, all we need to do to turn this into QPSK is set this up so that we have four different symbols. So QPSK is an abbreviation for quaternary phase shift keying. Four different symbols. And I'm interested in both the I and the Q channels as well as the modulated signaling waveform. Also note here that the generate system parameter sub VI produces the bits per symbol. So you can go ahead and keep track of that on the front panel. Now in order to ex understand QPSK just a little better, we can make use of the constellation diagram. And this is something that's best placed when you are on the front panel. You can see a constellation graph showing up when you're in the block diagram, but if you place it from the front panel first, it automatically comes pre-configured with the graph type and the appropriate indicator. Constellation graph needs to know about the number of um, samples per symbol. And here we see the two values showing up in the Q axis. And here we see two values showing up in the I axis. So the, again, I is the in-phase component. Q is the quadrature component, which we think of as the imaginary component of our complex baseband. It's a much more interesting looking graph when we have uh, pulse shaping going on. And to get a little better understanding of this graph, let's see, this issue has to do with that when you have pulse shaping going, you need to have a, a reasonable number of bits first before these will work properly. All right, so as you start to study the time domain and constellation graph, you should start to be able to see some correlation between the particular shape of that red trace on the constellation graph compared to the uh, nice smooth variations that you see in the time domain plot. So if you carefully look here, you can start to see some correlation between, between those two. And again, with no pulse shaping, then we just see nice straight line transitions between the symbols.